Hi everyone and welcome to The Crow's Show for 2018, brought to you by Foodland, I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith and once again this season we'll give you exclusive access to the players, coaches and staff as they strive for the Premiership success that just eluded us last year. Yes, Alana. And we'll also look at the issues and challenges that inevitably crop up as the season unfolds. Indeed. Now coming up in today's show, Brody Smith's long, long road to recovery and we'll introduce our new segment, The Game. Great grabs. When you have a chance to replicate it as a kid, you, you do, but you never really, you know, I never really went in as a kid thinking, oh, I'm going to take a high mark today. But first, like all good managers, Don Pike constantly strives to get an edge on his AFL counterparts. During the off-season, he attended a leaders' conference in London with some of the best sports minds in the world. So, what did he learn, and how will it make him a better coach? Yes, I went to London for about nine days and there was, there was probably three, three, three reasons over there and one was there was a conference there which I attended for a couple of days which was a, a sort of sports performance conference and there was a number of uh, presenters there that were from all walks of, of life and different things which sort of challenged your thinking a bit so we had people who were in uh, emergency response teams in, in the army through to people who were in emergency departments, um, Mercedes Benz and, and their pit crew you know, sort of things about how they actually operate in high pressure uh, environments. Um, so lots of different presenters, which was great. And I was fortunate enough to spend a day with a, a number of other coaches and managers from you know, some international sports. And it was pretty much a, a round table discussion about what are we, what are we facing as coaches or as, as managers and, and how are we managing certain, uh, certain trends within games. Well, and then at the end of it, I spent some time with Eddie Jones and, and UK Rugby ahead of their game against Argentina at Twickenham, which was you know, a wonderful experience to go and see 80,000 Englishmen pack into Twickenham and, and take on the Argentinians. Yeah, well, I got to see uh, when I landed, basically the day we landed, it was Chelsea versus Man United at Stamford Bridge, so went and watched that and you know, it, was, uh, it was interesting to see the players and, and having not really watched too much soccer live, it was, you know, especially at that level, you see the quality of them, their, their ball take, their, their positioning, the way they structured the ground, but as, you know, I, was, I was probably pleasantly surprised with how big they were. Some of the strikers are a, a seriously big men and, and you know, once they got out there, it was, uh, it was good to watch. <laughs> haven't changed and generally rule changes are something that dictates the way the game's played. I think you'll see, you know, this year I expect you'll see a continuation a bit from last year and there was you know, a push towards you know, the two teams who made the grand final were basically the number one and two you know, time in forward half so you know, field position seems to be the buzzword if you like at the moment that the people are focused on and how you get that but more importantly how you keep it. Well, every new season brings fresh optimism for all clubs and their supporters. Coaches will plot and prosecute different strategies and players will dare and delight with renewed brilliance. And Mark, the game, it's constantly evolving. What sort of changes are you expecting to see this season? Well, generally every year, teams look at what the Premiership side did and Richmond last year, they had a quite unique forward half. One key forward in Jack Revolt and then five smaller forwards that just were really high pressure and, and created turnovers in their front half from where they scored. So I'd expect many teams to try that. Now, Adelaide is slightly different. Adelaide had huge success with a number of key tall forwards. So I'm not expecting Adelaide to go down that path, but other teams will try the Richmond style. Well, just further to that, Mark, speaking of the Crows lineup, obviously a few changes in the off-season. How do you view them? Yeah, look, I think the defence is going to be the major one for Adelaide. Uh, they lose Jake Lever, of course, but Brody Smith does leave a big hole. I think they can cover Lever with a number of players moving through there, but Smith's run and carry and his penetration with his kick is going to be more difficult. How do they do that? I think it's going to come down to a combination of players. Uh, throughout the year, they'll use Douglas, maybe Seedsman, Wayne Miller, even Bryce Gibbs. So that's the way they cover it. It won't just be one man stepping in for Brody Smith. All right, thanks very much for that, Mark. There is certainly plenty for fans to focus on over the next few months. Now after the break, we'll review the season opener and the kids call. Our youngest supporters tell it as it is.
Well, in 2018, we'll continue to revisit some of football's memorable moments, but we'll do so by recalling the great grabs that are a highlight of the game we love. This new segment, brought to you by Flight Centre, is known as High Flyers, and who better to feature first up than Graham Corns? Of all his aerial feats, he best remembers his mark and goal after the siren against Norwood in 1977. Avery puts it in towards full forward again. There was no time left on the clock, so there was a fair chance he was going to put the ball in the goal square, so I just ran down, ball set up, just had to go for it, and somehow, somehow it stuck, and then, then the siren went. The siren's gone! The siren has found Gorge with the opportunity from 15 metres out to win the game. And then you had to, still had to kick the goal, but you're looking at this Nord grandstand at the southern end and all the cheer squad behind it, but it, the kick went straight and we won the game and it was it was a really exciting moment to be quite frank. Look, in, in, the, in that day and age, players weren't that expressive after they kicked goals. You, had, you sort of kick the goal and you get on with it. Um, but that was so exciting. The players came from everywhere and, uh, and the crowd came from everywhere. So it was just the euphoria of winning a game against a great opponent on their home ground. I think every footballer dreams of marking on the siren and, and, and kicking a goal to, to, win the, to win the game for the team and it doesn't really happen to a lot of players. Every kid does dream of kicking a, a goal after the siren and every footballer does too but at the time it was just euphoric. Yeah. No, it, was a, it was a great moment. Glen Elgin finished up winning that day by three points. Well, we're used to club funny man Brodie Smith getting a laugh at his teammates' expense. This year, instead of grilling other players, we'll let him tackle some of the club's younger supporters. We know kids can be brutally honest, so let's find out in our Junior Jam segment, brought to you by Thomas Farms. Welcome to Junior Jam, brought to you by Thomas Farms. Last year I interviewed my teammates, this year I'll be interviewing some of our youngest members. This week we've got Archie. Welcome Archie. Hello, I'm Archie. <laughs> Who's your favourite player? My favourite player is Eddie Betts, sorry Brody. Yeah, that's okay. I'm used to that, that's alright. Our forwards or defenders call her. Uh, I think I've got a feeling if Eddie Betts is your favourite player. Yeah, forwards. Forwards? Yeah. And why? They kick the goals. Yeah, but we, and we stop them. Yeah, yeah, but, but we kick them. <laughs> What's the best thing about being a kid? We get more advantages um, with our choice of food. <laughs> How so? Well, our parents just, they just ask what we want for lunch. And, we and they just, make it for you? Yeah. 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 This today I had waffles for, in my lunchbox. So. I've got that too, it's called Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> if you could take any animal from the zoo, what animal would it be and how would you catch it? It would be a hippo. <laughs> and I'd catch it using a net. That's a big net. It's a big net and it would have to be made out of metal because <laughs> they are extremely heavy. Um, if you are invisible for a day, what would you do? Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. If you could take one player from an opposition team, to come to the Crows, who would it be? I don't even know. Patrick Dangerfield again. He needs to come back. Thanks for drawing us, Archie. That was uh, that was <laughs> very good. You stumped me first up. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Well, to sign up as a Crows junior member and receive all the great benefits, head to 19thman.com.au. After the break, we'll catch up again with Smithers, this time to hear about his rehab and learn how this young man salvaged his football career. The loss of Brodie Smith early in last year's finals campaign undoubtedly unsettled the side and he'll certainly be missed for most of this season. But he's desperate to return inside 12 months and the best rehab advice in the sporting world might just help him get there. 
thanks to Revolution Roofing, we join Smithers on the comeback trail. A sight to delight every Crows fan. Brody Smith well down the road to recovery. The long and painful journey began after he seriously injured his right knee in last year's qualifying final. Brody Smith in a bit of trouble here, boys. Facing 12 months on the sidelines, Smithers embarked on a punishing rehab program that included a visit to world-renowned recovery expert Bill Knowles in the US. He's the same man who's helped Taylor Walker and Nick Nadan among a string of elite athletes. The week training in America was the plan to try and speed things along and, and learn a few new things and um, what I can put into place. It's not so much about speeding up the process, it's about coming back a better athlete. But yeah, I'm, I'm confident now that you know I can come back and, and be stronger, fitter, faster, hopefully. He timed the trip to coincide with the Super Bowl, much to the dismay of some envious teammates. The guys like Lady, Lynchy and, and JJ were pretty flat, but um, that was a great experience and they're on a different level over there. The Americans, the way they pump up their, their sports and their entertainment and their fans are just crazy. For the time being, Brody is committed to mentoring younger players and helping develop a new look defence. I guess with myself and obviously Jake going as well, there's a couple of spots that are up for grabs, so just try and help those, those possibly young guys that might fill in those roles and... Um, you know, working closely with guys like Jake Kelly who you know wants to become a bit more attacking this year so I hope that I can help him and, and things like that. And that role will put him close to the action. I've heard there's a new rule that long-term injuries can sit on the bench now so hopefully I can go down there um, for our home games and um, go out to the huddles and offer anything I can see from a player's perspective. So when will we see number 33 back in the team? Yeah time frame wise still no idea but obviously pushing to, to play some footy at the end of the year before finals hopefully. We certainly wish Brody a speedy recovery. A late season charge wasn't quite enough to see the Crows AFLW side make the grand final and defend their inaugural premiership. But among the many positives from the season, the rise of Ruth Wallace stood out. The crafty young goal kicker was mentored throughout her first year by assistant coach Andrew McLeod. Beautifully read by Wallace. I've known Ruthie for a long time, um, worked closely with Ruthie when she uh, left school um, and she was working, I was working for the AFL at the time and she was doing an, a traineeship with the SANFL and uh, I had the uh, opportunity to, um, I guess, mentor, do some mentoring stuff with Ruth and, and, and help her. Um, I didn't know that he was going to be working there, so when he came into one of our meetings and um, when we were first getting started with the rest of the trainees, I was a bit in shock because obviously, you know, myself and, you know, my brother, he's a huge, you know, um, supporter of him and, um, you know, we've been following his career and everything like that. Did know you know seven eight years later that I'll be you know coaching her in, the, in there but we've we've had a great relationship for a for a, um, a long period of time now. Wallace looking for three, strolling in 35 from home, set sail, she's got it, she has got it. I have absolutely loved it, it has been such an incredible journey and um, you know over the since the season started, it's literally gone within a blink of an eye. No, she's she's great. She's come in and adds a, another dimension to the to um, our team. Of course, next year the competition will be expanded to ten teams with a full final series. Achieving an AFL career is as much a test of character as it is a test of ability. Lachlan Murphy knows that better than most. After suffering the disappointment of being overlooked in his draft year, he moved to Adelaide to keep his dream alive, only to face the prospect of being rejected again. But that's when he dug deep. Getting told he wasn't good enough to make the Crows list was a rude shock to Lachlan Murphy. After a solid 2017 in the Sandfall and six weeks before the draft, Lachlan was given the confronting truth by a recruiting manager, Hamish Ogilvie. We'll give you a 5% chance, no more. Come back fitter, come back stronger and come back you know, with a professional mindset and, and prove to us that you can do that. Determined to prove his critics wrong, Lachlan trained every day, losing two kilos and smashing his personal best times. In a few desperate weeks, he turned his career around and made the rookie list. Hello, Locke. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 
nice, mate. Sometimes 5% Thank chances you, come off. Incredible, mate. I just, I can't believe it. Well, it gives you a start and a chance to compete against the other boys on the same playing field now. For Hamish Ogilvie, it was vindication for inviting Lachlan to come to Adelaide from Melbourne after he was overlooked in the 2016 National Draft. The 18-year-old grabbed his chance. Um, I understood that you know, almost no one else that missed out on the draft had this opportunity to be able to um, not just work at the club but you know, have access to the facilities and, and still you know, be able to use the, the older mentors around the club. Only a few days ago, he knew selectors were watching. Just doing whatever I possibly can to you know, put my hand up and that could be round one, it could be round 20, it could be anywhere in between. So I'll do anything I can to uh, make that dream a reality. His draft day pledge, just what the club wanted to hear. Worked hard to get here, but it's just a start now. Good. Just a start, I won't let you down. Lachlan is the first player to be drafted from the Crows development squad. Let's hope he has a good year. After the break, we ask the fans to pick a player and we look for our face in the crowd. We know that among Crows fans there are some astute judges and we always want to hear their opinions. So to kick off the new season, we asked which new player excited them most. Uh, Bryce Gibbs, I reckon, should add a new strength into the midfield, help out Rory Sloan and a few of the other boys. Uh, definitely Fogarty. Uh, he's got a lot of promise, so I'll be really interested to see, see what he can do. Uh, Lucky Murphy. I think Darcy Fogarty um, seems quite quick and um, seems as if he can handle himself. So, yeah, him. Gibbsy, definitely. Gibbs, of course. Yeah, everyone loves Gibbs. Cool. So, and, and Sam Jacobs is really happy to have his mate back as well, so that's brilliant. Well, once again this year, we'll be looking for a Crow's face in the crowd who we can reward with the help of Toyota. So who will our first winner in 2018 be? Why don't we settle on you? All you have to do to receive a merchandise pack is contact the club via email before 5 p.m. on Wednesday and be ready to show some photo ID. That just about wraps up our first show for the year brought to you by Foodland. Well, don't forget that you can always catch up on the latest Crows news by visiting the club website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook and Twitter. Yep, and next week, we'll sit down with Hugh Greenwood, who looks to be better than ever after off-season surgery. Yeah, looking forward to that. He was certainly one of the great success stories of last season. We look forward to joining you then. Bye for now.